It was an eventful January for the equity markets. We saw geopolitics take center stage. And by the end of the month, of course, we also had budget 2024 that had quite a few interesting announcements for the financial markets. Let's talk then about what the outlook is for the equity markets in the month to come. For that, I have with me the Senior Executive Vice President for Equity Research, Shibani Korean. Thanks so much, Shibani, for joining us. I think my first question to you should be on um, what exactly did you think of Budget 2024? Quite a few interesting announcements, a lot of focus on inclusive growth, on infrastructure allocation. Your take, especially from an equity market point of view? Yes, hi. So if you look at the union budget, this was an interim budget and a vote on account and therefore setting the stage for the main budget, which will come post the elections. I think what they've actually managed to do is the trinity of, of you know looking at inclusive growth and development looking at investment growth and infrastructure as well as keeping the fiscal deficit under check maintaining the glide path for fiscal deficit to come down to four and a half percent by fi 26 mm -hmm. so i think it's actually managed to achieve pretty much the impossible mm -hmm. so the three key factors to look at First is in terms of inclusive growth and development. Now, it's not just about the schemes. So what's been typically happening over the last decade is that the government has been trying to focus on plugging many of the leakages. And that's been done through the Jandhan Aadhaar and the mobile or the jam trinity. And because of the kind of um, plugage of leakage that you've seen, a lot of resources have been freed up in order to fund the investment requirements of the country. So that's number one. The second is if you look at the investment and infrastructure focus, even in this budget, if you look at the budget estimates for FI25 over the revised estimates for FI24, there is almost a 17.5%, 17.7% to be precise growth in terms of the outlay. So the focus in terms of public sector capex continues and that's a pretty big positive. And over the last decade, the government has actually built a lot of infrastructure. In fact, as much as what was done till 2013 has been done in the last decade. And the third aspect, as you rightly pointed out, is the fiscal prudence. And that reflects in the fact that the net market borrowing, which has been budgeted for the next year, is pretty much in line with market expectation and what it was for FI24. So this, for the equity markets to look forward to, is now going to be the budget or the next, uh, the overall budget which will be presented post the elections. Here are two things to watch out for. One is that public capex clearly has been the predominant driver for infrastructure growth. How does the government then lay out the roadmap for that translating into private sector capex? And the second is how does it become more and more inclusive in terms of growth where mass consumption, mass demand starts to pick up the way we have seen the top end or the premium demand uh, pick up over the last few years since COVID, uh, the, the COVID crisis. So I think these are the two key elements to watch out for from an equity market perspective. But overall, I think the trinity of inclusive growth, investments, as well as fiscal prudence were the main highlights of the budget. Now, so far, uh, we've seen government capex take center stage um, with the announcements that we saw, especially, you know, with borrowings reducing um, from the government side. Um, do you see more room for credit uh, for private capex to pick up? Absolutely. Uh, so if you look at you're right, what has started off, if you look at the entire pie of investments, two key segments of the investment pie have uh, fired. One is the public sector capex, which started off with central government capex, then the state government capex has also picked up, and the household capex, which is essentially investments into real estate. Now, if you look at the budgetary support for capital expenditure continues to be fairly robust. I think what the budget really points out to the fact is that overall expenditure is becoming more and more productive, revenue expenditure is coming down and capital expenditure is going up. And in terms of growth, the growth number is also fairly robust at about 17.7% over the previous year. So the public sector capex continues. But what is also required now is private sector capex picking up as you rightly pointed out. If you look at capacity utilization levels at a headline basis, capacity utilization levels is now slightly above long term averages. In some sectors, for instance, in cement, for instance, the capacity utilization levels are higher than long term average, which means that there will be need for fresh capex. And that's something that we are already seeing in terms of some of the announcements, which are more sector specific. 
more importantly if you look at balance sheets whether it be corporate balance sheet or the banking sector balance sheet balance sheets are fairly healthy and strong corporates have deleveraged over the last few years which means that the stage is set for funding of fresh capex as well and our belief is that over the next few years as capacity utilization levels in the system keep picking up you will keep seeing announcements of private sector capex picking up and luckily for us the banking sector is in a good shape to fund that capex as well mm -hmm. and corporates may fund some of it from their internal accruals let's talk a bit about the third quarter earnings season what have you made of the numbers delivered so far and any interesting commentary from the management that stood out for you Yes, so you are right. We are in the midst of the third quarter FI24 earnings season. Uh, as we speak, about 33 Nifty companies out of the 50 have already declared their numbers. So what we have seen is that if you look at a top line or revenue growth, that has been at about six odd percent on a YOY basis, while your EBITDA and your bottom line growth has been higher at about 15 odd percent. So what this really means is that earnings growth has been largely led by margin expansion and therefore margins have been the driver for earnings uh, in this particular season. Also, um, if you look at the sector composition in terms of contribution to earnings, while at a headline level earnings have been pretty much so far in line with estimates, the domestic facing sectors again have been driver of earnings overall. So automobiles, capital goods, infrastructure, mm -hmm to some extent financials and oil and gas. So these have been the key sectors which have delivered and have contributed to the headline earnings number. So two key trends, one as I said margin expansion continues to be one of the drivers for earnings. The second factor is that when you look at from a investment and consumption perspective, investment growth or sectors which are related to the infrastructure investment segment have done well. In the consumption side, there is a dichotomy and therefore that K-shaped recovery that we keep talking about still is in play where premium consumption or segments related to premium consumption have typically done better than the mass segments. And while companies have referred to the fact that they may be seeing some green shoots where rural demand is concerned, so for instance in the two-wheeler space, yeah. but it's still a very, very slow and steady recovery where rural demand goes and that's one, going to be one key factor to watch out for. Net net so far in terms of earnings estimates for FI24 and 25, we have seen that earnings estimates are pretty much intact. So mid to high teens earnings growth expectations for this fiscal as well as for next fiscal that stays intact. Okay, well, um, just last week, uh, you know, we saw the news that India has overtaken Hong Kong and become the fourth largest equity market in the world. Yeah. Um, what do you think are the factors contributing to this? Do you think this positive trajectory can continue? And what are the sectors you're optimistic on that can probably drive this rally? Yeah, so it's been a wonderful journey for all of us in the equity markets. I think, uh, again, it's been a trinity of factors. One, uh, India stands out clearly in the global context where our macroeconomic stability goes. So India continues to be among the fastest growing economies of the world. Whether you look at fiscal deficit, current account deficit or inflation, on most macro parameters, India has been fairly stable, especially in the global context. The second most important factor for our market movement has been the earnings delivery. After a long period of time, we've seen corporate earnings being fairly robust. In fact, if you look at earnings to GDP or PAT to GDP, we bottomed out in FI20 and since then it's been a one way of improvement and therefore delivery on corporate earnings has been the second factor. The third factor has been flows and specifically the domestic retail flows which has contributed to stability in our market and the market moving up. From here on, we believe that earnings trajectory, as we were discussing, remains fairly buoyant and stable. So uh, on the earnings front, we are fine. However, we have to be mindful of valuations in this market. So when you look at valuations, let's look at it in two parts. If you look at the large cap space, large caps are trading slightly above long term average multiples on a price to earnings basis, while the mid and the small caps are trading at multiples which are at a significant premium to their long term averages. And therefore, in that construct of the market, while we still believe in the equity market story, specifically given our macro as well as earnings growth trajectory, our preference would be slightly tilted towards large caps over mid and small caps. Uh, your second question was in terms of the sectors. Our belief is that domestic facing sectors continue to be better placed in terms of earnings trajectory and therefore sectors such as 
uh, capital goods, infrastructure, manufacturing. That has been one large theme that we have played across our portfolios and we continue to be positive there. Mm -hmm. Financials, again off debated, but within financials because the sector is fairly large and diverse, there are pockets of opportunity and valuations are favorable. The third segment is auto and auto ancillaries. That's one segment that we are positive on. And then finally, cement and building materials. So these are a few sectors where we continue to remain positive. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pick up on one of the points you mentioned, and that's with respect to flows. Now, yes, domestic <laughs> flows are strong. I think um, what's a little volatile is FII flows. And we, we've been seeing FIs actually net selling Indian equities. Yeah. Um, what do you think are the reasons behind it? Do you think it will continue to stay volatile? So, FII flows typically have been volatile. Um, but of course, FIs are also realizing the fact that Indian markets and the Indian economy has seen a significant turnaround over the last few years, both in terms of macro parameters as well as earnings trajectory for corporate India. But having said that, I think what we see uh, last year and even in this year, uh, even if there is volatility where FII flows are concerned, domestic flows have been extremely resilient. So, mm -hmm. if you look at last calendar year, uh, what we saw is that DII flows were slightly ahead of FII flows, about $22 billion net inflows. FIIs were about $21 billion. And this month, uh, month of January, DIS continue to be net buyers of Indian equities. Our belief is that there is enough ammunition left if you look at the entire structure, even if there is volatility on the FII side for DII flows to offset some of that volatility. You have the SIP flows which come in every month which have been steadily rising, that provides uh, comfort and stability. Secondly, you have uh, you know, fund categories such as balanced advantage funds, which if markets see some correction will pretty much deploy in terms of their equity allocation. Mm -hmm. Then you have the EPFO, which uh, will keep putting in certain amount of their asset allocation into equity. Plus, fund managers and the mutual fund industry will also have cash levels, which if markets were seeing volatility will get deployed. So overall, uh, very difficult to predict FII flows per se, but we believe that the domestic overall construct in terms of flows, both from an SIP side as well as the retail participation in equities helps in terms of balancing out the volatility on the FII side. Okay, and let's end this discussion then uh, with you sharing with us uh, some advice that you would have for Indian equity investors. So I think first and foremost, stick to a very disciplined approach on asset allocation and regular investing, keeping in mind, of course, your risk profile as well as your investment horizon and goals. So that uh, goes without saying. Uh, secondly, SIPs, of course, is the best way to approach markets and therefore SIPs continue to be the preferred mode of investments into mutual funds. From an overall asset allocation perspective, given the fact that our markets have had a great run, while in the medium term we continue to be very positive on equities, what we believe is that given current valuations, uh, in terms of asset allocation, our advice is to be somewhat neutral uh, to equities in the overall asset allocation bucket. And within that slight preference for large caps over mid and small caps, predominantly because of valuations at the current juncture. But it, oh, Overall, I think uh, be disciplined, stay invested and uh, enjoy the ride. Shabani, great advice. Thank you so much then uh, for that wonderful tip and insight that I'm sure all of our investors as well will appreciate. That of course is Shabani. The key goal over here is that India is on the path to growth and you can of course participate on this ride by staying invested and keeping your focus on your investments. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.